Hi everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. That's Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We're a plant-based fitness nutrition company. Now, why plant-based? I'm looking to try to help other people achieve their fitness goals by keeping their machine clean. That is free from animal products and free from drugs. And I want to show people, especially guys, but all people, that you can build muscle without the use of drugs, uh, especially performance enhancing drugs or pharmaceutical drugs, and without the use of any animal products. I've been vegan for 37 years. So when I hear some of the plant-based doctors and pundits out there, some of the people who are on YouTube, other influencers, talk about some of the comparisons of why uh, animal proteins in general, but um, other nutrients are, are not good for us. We need to be careful of these generalizations that I'm starting to see a lot more of. Um, things like, uh, and I'll, I'll quote you some of these comments. Uh, I saw a comment just yesterday that said, Avoid omega-6 oils like the plague. Oh, come on, please stop doing this. This is, this is fear-mongering, and it's not necessary, and it's not even accurate. <laughs> Look, omega-6 fatty acids are essential for life. That means human beings need them to sustain health and sustain life. Yes, too much omega-6 is not a good thing, but too much water is not a good thing. You can actually die from drinking too much water. And water is essential for life. It is the <laughs> most essential uh, bit of nutrition that our body requires. We die in the fastest term. We can live without food for some people up to 40 days, but only about uh, a week or so without water at max um, before our system starts shutting down. So. Um, let's stop demonizing macronutrients. You know, carbs are bad, sugars are bad. No, they're not. In context, let's understand the context. So what I am doing this uh, entire talk on is putting some of these nutrients back into, pro into context. And what some of the plant-based doctors out there are, are commenting about, and I hear a lot of people who are watching them say, Oh, that, you know, uh, X and X doctor said um, protein uh, raises mTOR or stimulates IGF-1 and anything that stimulates mTOR is, is bad, is going to kill you. And, and that's just simply not true. It's not true. Biologically, it's not true. mTOR is a pathway, a biological pathway that we are all born with. It's needed for our bodies to actually replicate and create proteins for our healing, for our repairing, and for generation of new cells. What you don't want is the overstimulation of that so that you're actually stimulating the growth of potential cancer cells or unhealthy cells, or actually accelerating the growth rate of cancer cells if they and when they are present. So that's what you want to do. So I think we need to be careful when we're saying, you know, uh, X stimulates mTOR or IGF-1, which leads to cancer. That's not how it works. That's not how a healthy functioning biology works. IGF-1 is a necessary hormone. We need it for healing and repairing all of our cells in our body. That's why our own body produces IGF-1. That's why our body has a pathway called mTOR. Um, it's for proper function. It's when we put foods or carcinogenic materials inside our body that overstimulate these systems that are healthy when used correctly. That's the big difference. So let's let's go right down the line and, and talk about these things. So I hear about uh, leucine uh, stimulating cancer, and then people say, oh, I can't take leucine because it's going to uh, cause cancer. I mean, that's not, that's not how it works. 
Let's understand what leucine is. Leucine is one of the three branch chain aminos and all branch chain aminos are what they call essential amino acids, meaning our body cannot produce them so that we must consume them from the food or other ways of nutrition that we intake them. This leucine is a very specific function to help trigger our body. Okay, think of the human cell here. You've got a receptor site on the outside of the cell that docks for insulin. So insulin comes over, docks to the insulin receptor site. The cell opens up and can pull fat and carbohydrates and sugars into the cell so that our cell can use them for energy. Insulin is an important and anabolic functioning hormone. It is necessary. Insulin, raising insulin is not bad. Every time you eat, you raise insulin. Why? Because the insulin is trying to shuttle those nutrients and, and calories into the cells. That's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing when you way overproduce the calories, way overproduce the fat and carbs, and, and especially glucose, but most importantly, fats. And then you overstimulate insulin. So insulin is just pounding away on the receptor sites to the point where the receptor sites shut down and then they become unfunctional. So insulin is not a bad guy here. Insulin-like growth factor is not a bad guy. mTOR is not a bad machinery. These are healthy, functioning, proper mechanisms of health, of growth, of repair, of recovery, of renewal, of generation of proteins, generation of energy. These are healthy systems. What we, what many of these plant-based doctors are talking about is that animal proteins have too high levels of methionine, too high levels of leucine. Not only are they too high, but that we're consuming them every single meal. So it's a frequency of consumption of these nutrients. One, gut methionine levels are lower in plants, higher in animals. Now, methionine is an essential amino acid. We need methionine, right? So we have to get that from our food. But plants have plenty of methionine enough to suffice for us. But when you get methionine, because what does methionine, just like leucine, leucine docks to the outside of the cell, just like insulin docks, can dock to the outside of the cell and send a signal in to stimulate mTOR, which means, so what's happening is when you consume the protein, the body has cell uh, receptors on the outside of the cell. When it sees there's enough lutein to dock on the outside of the cell, the cell will open up and pull in amino acids, essential amino acids, so your body can start producing proteins for healing, for repairing, for growth, all of those important and healthy. This is a healthy response of leucine doing this. This is exactly what leucine should be doing in our human, healthy human cells. Now, what happens is when you create no need for this, you're a sedentary person, let's say. You're not exercising, so you're not creating a demand for new proteins to be generated. Then you consume this protein, like animal protein, that's really high in leucine, well, it's sending that signal to grow, 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 and your body is saying, no, 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 I don't have any reason to create excess proteins. Well, then you can form actually cancer cells. Now, a cancer cell has to grow just the way, it, the same way a healthy cell has to grow. They use the same mechanisms. They use leucine to grow. They use IGF-1 to grow. Both an unhealthy or cancer cell and a healthy cell. They both use the same mechanisms to grow. What you don't want is one, don't create the cancer cells to begin with by eating animal products or other carcinogens. Let's not create that cancer cell together. Then let's don't overly consume these nutrients if there is no need to consume them. Now, when you're working out and you're exercising, you're tearing down muscle, you are active, you are using up this energy. Um, and, and your body is actually has a need for more leucine, for more essential amino acids, for more stimulation of insulin and insulin-like growth factor. There is a need there because you created that need through healthy exercise. 
So let's talk about this. mTOR, uh, you know, when you increase mTOR in a cancer cell, of course it's going to grow just like a normal cell does because that's what a cancer cell is. A cancer cell is a human cell that has become carcinogenic, cancer, cancerous. It is it is a mechanism in its genetics that it turned on to grow uncontrollably. Uncontrolled growth is a no-no, is, is wrong. What you do want is controlled growth. Okay, well, I'll get into that in just a second. But So the type of the protein that you're consuming. So animal proteins, high in methionine. Methionine triggers growth. If you are a sedentary person, don't eat high growth in consuming nutrients like high methionine, high leucine, these stimulate growth. Now, if you are active and you are working out and you are plant-based, and I'll get to why that's really important, but if you are doing that, then you have a need for those growth promoting things because you are turning over protein. It's actually called in the scientific community protein turnover, which is the death and renewal of cells. You tear down inferior cells and replace them with better cells. This including growth, including uh, strengthening the cells by adding more protein, more protein density to the cell. A higher density protein cell is a stronger cell, a cell that can last against um, mechanical stress, physical stress, emotional stress, mental stress, these stressors that we're encountering all in our life, we want to strengthen our immune system. We want to strengthen ourselves. We want to strengthen our muscles too as well so that we can maintain our health throughout our life. So let's look at some of the data here. So if it were true that just stimulating mTOR would cause cancer, Let's look at one of the biggest increases in mTOR. The biggest increase in mTOR happens when you exercise. You can get a 40% increase in uh, just consuming food after a workout, but it's necessary. That's exactly what your body should be doing. Your body engages the machinery, mTOR, uses leucine to stimulate and turn on that growth, gets the body to repair and utilize those essential amino acids to repair and heal and promote the strength and growth of your cells. That's exactly what it's supposed to do in a healthy person. Now, if you're sedentary and you're eating all these growth promoting methionine and leucine and then triggering growth growth happening in there well if the body doesn't need that then the other cells the cells that are unhealthy cancer cells then can use that excess nutrients growth stimulating nutrients to grow and that's exactly what you don't want to happen but why doesn't that happen then when we exercise? Because you're using it, that's why. Exercise is known, and there's published human studies, meta-analysis looking at multiple human studies with almost 500,000 people in them, for up to 10 years showed 13 different cancers reduced when you exercise, when you exercise actually intensely. <laughs> So the intensity of the exercise makes a big difference on your whole metabolic health. And the more intensity the exercise, the better your metabolic health. As a matter of fact, brand new study on type 2 di diabetes just came out yesterday showing that um, just dietary interventions, about 60% of the people on dietary interventions alone were not effective at reducing um, type 2 diabetes. Although when they increased their intensity, which basically instead of three hours a week of exercise, they increased six hours a week of exercise, that they rapidly and statistically significantly decreased the risk for type 2 diabetes. So the intensity level of your exercise, how much endurance, that, that all matters too as well. So when you look at a plant-based diet, why does this not cause cancer in it when you're talking about the same protein. So the, the first study I want to pull up here is um, a study. If you've been watching my videos, you, you may have seen before. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the comment section and then pull it up on the screen so uh, people can read it uh, if you're watching later. Okay. 
it's going to be a little bit big and long. Um, but the basis of this study is they looked at high amounts of protein. So what happens when you consume a higher amounts of protein? It's like 200 grams of protein a day. So um, the, the highest amounts of protein in this, this group that they looked at, this is an interesting study because they looked at pro high protein consumption using plant proteins and high protein consumption using animal proteins. Big difference here is that the animal protein group had a 400% increase in cancer death, 500% increase in diabetes, by the way, in the high animal protein, but the exact same amount of protein in plants, and, and I'll read it for you, the associations were either abolished or attenuated if the proteins were plant derived. So this is interesting because we're saying, wait a minute, well, then it's not the protein or the protein amount that's actually the trouble. It's where the protein is coming from. If it's from animals, 400% increase in cancer. Same level of protein, high protein consumed, no incidence of cancer. So what's the big difference? What about the IGF-1? Because that's been a big topic, right? Oh, you know, leucine protein increase IGF-1. Well, what happens in vegetarians? Let's take a look at two studies and I'll pull them both up because one uh, study is in men, one study is in women, and they both showed the same thing. So these two studies that I'm putting up on the screen, the study shows the associations between insulin-like growth factor one, IGF-1, and its main binding proteins. So once you accelerate, I'm going to hide this so I can talk to you a little bit better, but once you elevate IGF-1, it can become dangerous if it's not bound. Once your body binds that IGF-1, it cannot be used by cancer. Well, what happened? Well, why isn't the body binding this? <laughs> it's interesting because when you are on a plant-based diet, your levels of IGF-1 binding proteins goes up. They've shown that men and women have up to 40% more IGF-1 binding proteins. That means that free IGF-1 that's floating around the bloodstream stimulated by protein is bound and safe. And that's why it's not stimulating cancer growth. Even though the same amount of high protein in an animal diet as a plant-based diet, they're not stimulating the same amount of cancer growth because of the regulatory systems that are in place. It's not the IGF-1 that's the problem. It's the plant-based diet and it's fiber upregulating these IGF-1 binding proteins, when you bind to that IGF-1, it neutralizes it and can't stimulate cancer growth. It is bound. And when the body needs it, it releases the binding and allows the body to use it when and where it needs. This is endogenous or inside our body regulation that happens. And we upregulate it by doing this. These show both in men and women having lower serum IGF-1, but more importantly, had higher IGF-1 binding proteins, most likely due to their high fiber diet. And that was compared to omnivores or meat eating uh, diets. So you see a big difference in why the same amount of protein, the same amount of leucine, the same amount of high methionine levels did not cause cancer in those in the plant-based diet because of the regulation of our body senses. When we consume plant proteins, they're rich in antioxidants, they're rich in polyphenols, they're rich in binders like IGF-1 binding proteins. All these things matter. You can't just say protein increases IGF-1 causes cancer. That is not how it works. That may be the path when you are inactive, and when you are consuming animal proteins, but it's not the case if you are active and using this, creating a demand for these nutrients, utilizing them in a proper way, and on a plant-based diet that has those uh, fiber, that has the antioxidants, that has the polyphenols, that has the higher rates of IGF-1 binding proteins. These things protect the cells 
from cancer. They don't create the cancer to begin with, and they stop the IGF-1 from stimulating the growth of the cancer. These are all very important facts. Now, this is how the system works. Our body has all these fail-safes in place as long as we put the correct plant inputs into them, then the human body can do exactly what it's intended to do. So let's stop demonizing mDOR. Let's stop demonizing IGF-1. These are healthy, proper, appropriate functions and hormones of the body. And these nutrients, protein, leucine, these are health promoting. They're essential. Our body needs them for appropriate growth and health. Let's not demonize them and say they're all bad. Just like that omega-6 quote that says avoid omega-6s like the plague that they're all anti-inflammatory. That's just plain false, okay? One, almost all plants with omega-3 come with omega-6s in them. It's the balance. It's the ratio. That's what we should be talking about. Don't demonize omega-6s. We need them. We die without them. So saying we should stay away from all omega-6 is 100% wrong. It's damaging and could end up hurting people who don't understand that incorrect messaging. What we need is, uh, uh, let's talk about omega-6s just for a second. Omega-6s are important for overall health. We have an inflammation system. Inflammation is not bad. Unbridled inflammation is not good because that can lead to disease states, but our body requires inflammation to heal itself. If you do not have an inflammatory response, the body is not sending signals to the rest of the body to heal itself. So if you take away a rocket on it, so uh, LA, which is the omega-6 from plants, is actually anti-inflammatory in its original state. Then the body secretes an enzyme, right? That converts it down to GLA and DGLA. Now DGLA is very anti-inflammatory. So a positive again. So you have two anti-inflammatory states of omega-6 before an enzyme comes along and converts it even further to arachidonic acid. Now that is pro-inflammatory but it is pro-inflammatory in a good way because when our body gets hurt, inflammation happens, you swell up, right? That's the body sending a whole bunch of cells over there to go heal itself. It needs water, it needs inflammation, it needs fluid, it needs some of those cell signaling to go on so that you heal yourself. Our body actually stores arachidonic acid, omega-6 in our muscle tissue, why? because when the body is stressed or when you stress or clench the muscle, you actually squeeze out some arachidonic acid. That signals the body to, hey, come over here and let's heal and repair this using IGF-1. That's why IGF-1 goes up when you eat, when you sleep, and when you exercise. Now to say IGF-1 can lead to cancer growth. Well, of course it can, but all cells do that too as well. IGF-1 goes up when you eat, when you sleep, and when you exercise. Is Are eating, sleeping, and exercise causing cancer? No, no, stop. It's, it's these things taken out of context that are the real issue. It's what you don't want is too much omega-6. You don't want too much protein. You don't want too much leucine. So what is too much? Well, too much is when you are inactive and don't create the demand for these nutrients, then you are eating uh, animal products that are high in these nutrients, three to four to five times higher in leucine and methionine than plant-based sources. And then you're eating them every single meal, every single day. That's when you're not giving your body the chance to stop the growth of the, the cells. Now our body, can have cancer cells at any given time. And we have a system in place to what's called apoptize or kill these cancer cells. Our body recognizes a cell gone rogue and it goes over and destroys it. It kills it or converts it back. In the case of IP6, if you check out one of my other videos on phytates and phytic acid, you'll see how phytic acid can actually take a cancer cell and restore it back to a healthy cell. And that's found in plants. 
So this is another way that plants can help us heal and prevent the cancers that are happening. So one, you don't want to create the cancer to begin with. Two, you don't want to consume foods like animal foods that overstimulate the cells and leave lots of excess stimulatory factors to accelerate cancer cell growth. Then thirdly, if you're not exercising, you're not accelerating the systems that the body uses to heal and repair and remove these. Okay, when you, when you step on a car engine gas pedal, you're getting more gas to the engine, right? You're getting it because it needs it because you're trying to go faster, right? But also the body has an exhaust, so it pushes it out faster. When you exercise, you create the body's process, you accelerate the body's process of eliminating these waste products, eliminating these growth stimulating things that the body is not using. If you're sedentary and you're putting in all these growth stimulators like leucine and methionine and high amounts of protein growth stimulators, but you have created no need for that stimulation, now all that extra stimulation is just floating around your system. And sure enough, those little cancer cells that are hanging out before our body can get to them start pulling all that extra stuff in. And that's when it becomes a problem. So we have to be careful to keep these things in context. I want to show you just one other um, major study. This one just came out uh, May of 2020, last year and uh, published in the um, uh, British Medical Journal. I'm gonna put this up on the screen too so you can see it and in the chat box. Just a second, it's loading up. But basically this said that diets high in protein, this is the name of the study, diets high in protein, particularly plant protein are linked to lower risk of death. Now they looked at all causes of death, but also in cancer in this one. But one of the key takeaways in here is conclusions. So that's their conclusion for this whole study. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it a little bit here too. Is the higher take intake of total protein was associated with a lower risk of all cause mortality. So this is, this is contradictory to what some are saying out there that actually higher protein was associated with a lower risk of all cause mortality. And the intake of plant protein was associated with a lower risk of all cause and cardiovascular disease mortality. So replacements of foods high in animal protein with plant protein sources could be associated with longevity. Live longer and prosper. That's what I want for you. That's why I share this information. Uh, please let's stop saying stop demonizing and making essential nutrients bad or essential functions that are in our body are bad. They're not bad. Our body doesn't make mistakes like this. What we do is in our food choices and our activity choices. So once we do a plant-based diet and exercise, your concern for these risks go down dramatically. As you saw with the binding proteins in, in um, vegan men and women, they have much higher binding proteins. This allows the body to utilize IGF-1 when it needs it and keep it safe from being used by cancer cells when we don't need it. Exercise does the same thing. Here's another incidence of exercise. So exercise has shown to increase mTOR by 40%. That is the biggest increase of, of mTOR pathway. Now, if mTOR was actually responsible for stimulating cancer cells, well, then exercise would be causing cancer like crazy. And we know just the opposite of true. Exercise has been shown to decrease the risk for 13 different cancer types, including prostate, breast cancer, some of the most major bladder cancer, liver cancer, blood cancers, um, non-Hodgkin's, lots of them, all decreased by exercise, which increases mTOR. Okay, so if that's the case, <laughs> Why and how is that happening? Because exercise actually increases another thing called, let me uh, find it here in my notes, ERK. 
Okay, which is extracellular signal related kinase. Okay, it's a it's a terminology. It's another pathway. It's called ERK. E -R -K. So ERK is a regulating mechanism. So you've got mTOR over here creating. It's the machinery that helps stimulate the creation of new proteins. Okay, now when a cancer cell, which is a human cell gone rogue, uses the same mTOR to create proteins, it can accelerate the cancer cell growth. But in a healthy cell, we have a response. This is why stimulating mTOR is not a bad thing in context. When you stimulate mTOR, it's because you've created a need. Exercise means you need to create new proteins to heal and repair and recover and strengthen the cells that you just exercised. That's a good thing, but it also has a regulatory mechanism attached to it, right? So when you consume the food, the food can get broken down, used by mTOR to make proteins, to make muscle, but the exercise itself also stimulates ERK, which regulates that mTOR and keeps it from overproducing or, or doing that. That's why exercise is shown to decrease your risk for cancer because it's actually shutting down the mechanisms within the cancer cell that would keep it from growing. This is exactly the good stuff that you want. Eat the plants, raise your binding proteins for IGF-1 so the cancer cells can't use that IGF-1 to grow. With that plant-based diet, exercise. So exercise turns on that ERK mechanism that regulates mTOR and keeps mTOR from being used for unhealthy cell growth. This is how a plant-based diet and exercise combined together can keep you healthy, can keep you safe, regardless of the nutritional intake. Remember, same amounts of high protein in animals and in plants vastly different results in cancer. 400% increase in cancer when you're consuming the same amount of protein as you would in animals as plants. Big difference in the type of protein, the amount of protein that we're consuming, and the frequency of the pr protein that we're consuming. When you do a workout and you take a leucine nutrient, you're gonna in, you've already created the demand for that leucine. You've created the demand in the mTOR. You've created the demand for protein generation. So you need to feed it the nutrients that it's doing. The problem comes when you're sedentary and you're not creating the demand, yet you're still uh, ingesting of these high amounts of growth stimulating factors that's where it becomes a problem. So it's the sedentary lifestyle of the vast majority of Americans coupled with their animal-based diet that is creating these disease states. That's why I'm trying to encourage more and more people to eat more plants, exercise more, and keep yourself healthy and enjoy life for the long run. It's real simple, eat plants and exercise. Real simple, the body will take care of the rest. Let's not fear these bodies' mechanisms, its hormones, uh, or, or the nutrients that we're consuming. You do not need to fear them if you're doing them the right amounts from plants in their whole food state or the proper amount of nutrition needed. Remember, when you exercise, you increase the need for a nutrition. So you do have to increase your total intake of the study. I'm going to show you this study, too. Um, uh, Okay, this one right here, yep. Yeah. All right, this one This one study was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It's one of the top scientific uh, papers um, in the United States. And let's just go ahead and put this up and I'll read it to you so you can see what it is. But this one's called Dietary Protein is Associated with Musculoskeletal Health Independently of Dietary Pattern. Dietary Pattern is what type of diet you are actually consuming, whether you're lacto-ovo or vegetarian or vegan or plant-based or meat eater, omnivore, that, that sort of thing. That's called a dietary pattern. Um, and it's the Framingham third generation study. So there were no associations between protein clusters, which is where you were getting your protein from, whether it's from plants or eggs or fish or dairy or meat. Those are protein clusters. Didn't matter as long as you were consuming enough of the protein. 
Now, and I'll put this up on the, oh, no, I won't, because I'm having a little technical difficulties. All right, I'll read it out loud to you. So this is a direct quote from the study, from the uh, Framingham third generation study. Individuals in the lowest quartile of total protein intake had significantly lower lean mass and strength than those who had higher amounts of protein. So consuming enough protein for your activity level is still important. Consuming enough of the essential amino acids, including leucine, is still important. So if you're looking to stay healthy, stay strong, keep your metabolic health, metabolic health is when you exercise, you upregulate all the systems in your body, your detoxification systems, your sweat systems, your, your nitric oxide systems, which op open up your arteries and give you artery health, that expansion and contraction of your arteries. You're basically exercising your own arteries and your blood vessels. This is really important. This elasticity, this stretching and opening and closing of your blood vessels is very important for arterial heart so you don't have um, cardiovascular disease states, which is rampant in the United States because we are sedentary and because we are consuming foods that are actually damaging our arteries instead of supporting them. Exercise can be a tremendous help for this, but you do have to, just like this study is saying, um, and it's not actually letting me pull up on the screen, but great study out there. So why the big difference between this? Well, the key difference is I'm going to pull up one last uh, graph on the screen here. So this is called the leucine threshold. So what you need to do is consume enough leucine to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis for all your health needs regeneration of cells that have died, um, replacement of cells that are inferior or are damaged, um, recovery of cells um, that have been exercised or stressed. All of those are important. Now, if you look on these bar graphs, you can see that uh, those consuming whey, which is the white bar, the first bar there, we're already hitting the leucine threshold. So that was enough leucine to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis to allow for all that healing and repairing to go on. The two amount, the two bars right next to it, uh, the gray and the grayer bar, um, were soy and rice at 25 grams of protein. So what happens when you increase the protein intake? Well, you can see the soy and the rice at 48 and 50 grams of protein were past the leucine threshold. They got enough of the leucine. So this, this graph and this study is showing us that one, leucine only gets to a certain point and when you get there, you don't, any more leucine doesn't matter. So consuming a high leucine animal-based diet, you're just wasting leucine at this time. And that's where you get all that excess leucine that is actually can go around stimulating unhealthy cells to grow. That's what you don't want. What you do want is to get your body into a high enough leucine to stimulate the proper healthy amount of growth for cellular activity, um, uh, recovery, repair, muscle building, if you want it. That's where just adding a little bit of leucine right after your workout with your protein shake can get you through that threshold without consuming a whole bunch of like 50 grams of protein of plant protein. Instead, you can consume 25 grams, but just add a little bit of leucine. This is how leucine supplementation can actually help you consume less protein. Now, I know you're probably thinking, hey, this is the guy who sells protein powder and he's telling me a way where <laughs> a trick how I can consume less because I want it for your health. I want it for your best results. And when we consume less calories by not having to consume 48 to 50 grams of protein of plant protein to get us into the positive ratio where we're maximally stimulating muscle protein synthesis, so we can heal and repair our body, then that's an important thing. If you can just get that up there at the right time, one or two times a day, that's it. Instead of hit, hammering it with leucine and high amounts way above what we need all day long, every single meal, that's what happens, what's happening when you consume an animal-based diet. And that's why a plant-based diet with proper supplemental nutrition can get you the results you want. Keep your caloric intake low produce longevity uh, situation where you're giving your body everything it needs nutritive wise to do its thing properly. 
without giving it excess of the nutrients that your body doesn't need that could result in stimulating unhealthy cell growth. Well, I hope this clarifies something. I know it went over a lot of research. I had a lot more research to cover, but you know, I know it's getting at 40 minutes already, so it's a long one. Thank you for staying with me for this. I hope you learned some valuable information for this. Um, I love the plant-based doctors. Please don't get me wrong. I love the work that we're doing. But in our own passion, uh, plant-based folks can get a little too short. And, and look, we're in a, a media age where you have to hammer everybody within three seconds of, of one liner, you know, everything sound bites just to keep people's attention in this ADD uh, nation. But listen, let's talk the truth at least. Let's don't oversimplify science to the point where people are misunderstanding. Oh, leucine's bad, it causes cancer. No, it doesn't. It's necessary for our health and, and growth in proper amounts, in proper plant foods, with proper exercise. I know you can't string that all out in three seconds in a sound bite, but that's the truth. And if we don't start with the truth, people are gonna misunderstand this information, misunderstand and misinterpret the science and say things like that guy posting on T. Colin Campbell's website saying, uh, avoid omega-6 like the plague. No. Don't do that, you'll hurt people. And that's really bad information. Omega-6 is essential for life. It is not the plague, <laughs> it's anything but the plague. Um, God, there's some bad information out there and I, I'm hoping to try to set the record straight. And look, don't take my word for it either. Please challenge the information. That's why I post all the science and all the links out there so that you can read it for yourself, come to your own conclusions but at least get more of the whole story instead of these soundbite information that are being peddled out there. And, and look, I understand these plant-based doctors are trying to say, hey, this is this, and this in animal diets, in sedentary people. That's what we need to be talking about. That's a major problem. It's too much, too often from animals who in people who are not exercising. When you take that into context, it's a whole different story. But I think we get a little lazy sometimes in trying to do these soundbite um, talks and stuff that we are sending the wrong message and demonizing protein. It's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with protein. There's nothing wrong with carbs. There's nothing wrong with fats. There's nothing wrong with these things in their right amounts, in their right forms, in the right dosages. <laughs> you know, these are, these are what's found in nature. Let's, let's, you know, instead of saying carbs cause that, no, complex carbs don't. Complex carbs and whole foods don't do that. It's simple carbs and, and processed foods that do that. Let's make the distinction so that we don't get back into this game where people are saying all carbs are bad. No, that's wrong. All omega-6s are bad. No, that's wrong. That's biologically and health information-wise wrong, wrong, wrong. This is not the whole truth, and we need to be careful to share the whole truth and at least give a little bit of time to explain these things and their complexity. This machinery is amazingly complex. It has self-regulating mechanisms in it. With the omega-6, the body it will take plant-based omega-6 as LA. In its LA state, it is anti-inflammatory. When it converts to DGLA, it is anti-inflammatory. It's only when omega-6 converts all the way down to the third process to arachidonic acid that it becomes pro-inflammatory. And we need some pro-inflammation to help heal our body. What you don't want is the body to consume a bunch of arachidonic acid. That's what's already in animal products. When you consume an animal product, it's already got the uh, omega-6 converted all the way down. Now it's there and it's in your body and your body can't do anything but be pro-inflammatory with it. That's more the problem. Our body has a regulator. It can turn off through epigenetics, turn off and on a gene that produces the enzyme which converts LA down to DGLA and down to arachidonic acid. If our body has enough arachidonic acid, even though we're consuming high amounts of plant-based LA, it won't turn on that gene to convert more of that to pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid. It self-regulates. 
it keeps that under control. Now, when you overconsume omega threes by eating a bunch of oil, especially if it's denatured oil, like deep fried stuff, no, that's not good. That's not healthy. But in, don't demonize that omega six because our body has a self regulatory mechanism in place to make sure that um, LA and DGLA, which are both anti inflammatory and health promoting, don't get converted down to arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory until we need it, until there is injury, until there is a need for some pro-inflammation. Remember, pro-inflammation is part of the healing process. We need that. All inflammation is not bad. If you canceled out all inflammation, that would be horrible for the human body. It would not be able to have a properly functioning immune system, and it would not be able to heal and repair itself the way it can with pro-inflammatory conditions. So I hope this information tries to set this little record straight because I keep seeing all this information spread by even some of the top influencers just by being sound fight and then hearing people parrot what they're saying by X causes X. It's just so not true because they're not understanding the complexity and the self-regulatory self -regulatory mechanisms in the human body and what a healthy body should be doing and um, so I, I hope this was a value. If you like it, please share. Please let other people know about our weekly podcast. I want to get as much good information out there. And again, I'll always share the studies and the links with you. I'm actually going to post a bunch more studies uh, that I've accumulated for this talk. But this talk is running a little bit long, so I'm not going to post them all up here. But I will post them down below in the links so that you can read all this research for yourself. If you're into the research, if not, I do summaries usually within the research to highlight some of the conclusions and, and what they've learned from the research to simplify them for you. Thank you for joining me on this Facebook Live. This has been an important one. Uh, again, no, no, I'm not arguing with any of the plant-based doctors. I, I bless them for doing a world of good. Dr. Milton Mills, uh, Dr. Garth Davis, um, Esselstyn, uh, McDougal, so many great uh, plant-based doctors out there, obviously, Gregor, doing a great job. But I think in our passion to try to show some of the mechanisms and reasons why animal proteins are not good in sedentary people, they leave that part out and just say mTOR or IGF-1 or leucine, which are all just essential parts of a healthy human functioning adult. Um, and shouldn't be demonized. They should be understood in context. Too much is the problem. Too often is the problem. Sedentary lifestyles is the problem. And I think we need to focus on that. Eat plants, exercise, enjoy your life, smile a lot, have good relationships, sleep well, drink lots of water, and be at peace. Thank you for joining me.